All right, guys, so we're going to focus today on differentiating between atoms, ions, and molecules, okay? So uh, that will be our main topic, okay? That's your main topic, atoms, ions, and molecules. That'll kind of be the same for, throughout uh, this chapter. And then your key concept, your essential question, okay? It has it right up there at the top. All living things are based on atoms and their interactions. What are, what are interactions? What's another word for interactions? That word interactions, what does that mean? Yes? To like, come, like, communi like not communicate, but like uh, work together. To work together, okay? To work together. That's another word that you can say for working together. Yes, that is. All right, so structure of an atom. Uh, we know that an atom is something that cannot be divided anymore, correct? So our smallest atom would be hydrogen. And it's smallest because it only has one proton, one electron. Okay? Now, the fact that it is the smallest one makes it easily to bind with other things. And we're going to go over the covalent bonds versus ionic bonds and that kind of thing. But, but hydrogen, a lot of things want to join with hydrogen because sometimes the goal is, or the ultimate goal is to fill your your space, right? So you wanna, you wanna be stable, and being stable generally means that two, okay, in the first rings. Now there are different uh, levels, there are different orbitals, things like that, but, so hydrogen is easily uh, able to bind with other things. Okay, oxygen has six valence electrons. Okay, valence electrons is another word uh, for the outer electrons on the outer shells or outer orbitals, orbitals okay? Okay, we know that structurally uh, we have a nucleus and we have electrons, okay? The nucleus is made up of protons, okay, and neutrons. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons are uncharged, and the electrons, we know that they are found on the outsides. Okay, so notice how we have two electrons here. Okay, that, that's complete. Okay, so, and then here on the outer one we have six. Okay, so that is complete. Now, what will happen though is that eight is the preferred. Okay, on these outer ones. Okay, two is the preferred on the, the most inner ones, but eight is the preferred on the outer ones. Okay, so oxygen has a total of uh, eight. Okay, here, two, four, six, it is pretty stable. Eight protons, eight neutrons, energy inner level is gonna be two. Um, outermost energy level is six, okay? So each energy level has a different component of electrons, okay? Okay, we know that when we have two or more elements that are bounded together, then we no longer have just an individual we have them kind of working in teams, and so we, call, we have what's called a compound. Notice how oxygen, you know, red, large, okay, it's a negative charge, okay? Um, we have our hydrogens here, and that affinity for oxygen is what kind of attracts those hydrogens here. Now notice, remember, there were six on that outer energy level, right? Well, eight is the preferred. So what happens then is that hydrogen is able to join in and fill those outer energy levels. So now that's complete. Water's very happy. It's very stable at this point. All right, so this is a different compound. Water was the first compound that we went over. Carbon dioxide is a different compound. Again, just got to remind you that how many atoms of hydrogen do we have in water? Two. How many atoms of oxygen do we have? We have one. Carbon dioxide, how many atoms of carbon do we have? One. How many of oxygen? Two. Good. So we have one molecule of each one of those represented. Now again, we have a situation where we have two oxygen atoms and two carbon. And we're going to learn that carbon is uh, what's called tetravalent. Okay, it's very, everything likes to join with carbon because carbon only has four valence electrons, which makes it easy to join with other things. Okay, so those two oxygen atoms, and everybody's happy in this situation. Okay, both of these, all three of these elements are very happy and content. They're very full. Okay, because everything, their valence electrons are, are, are complete. They're satisfied. They don't need to bond with anything else.
All right, so uh, we have to distinguish what an ion is. Anything with a charge, basically. Okay, so positive charge versus a negative charge, and it's dependent on whether or not you gave away or gained an electron. Okay, because if I give away an electron, what happens to the atomic nucleus? Okay, if I give away an electron, then I become more positive inside. Okay, if I gain an electron, I become more negative. So that's what the charge is based on. And so ionic bonding would mean that these things, in ACL, which is table salt, uh, it results because, guess what? You have one valence electron here. Chlorine's not giving away seven. It's just not gonna do that, okay? In a uh, sodium, okay, in order to be complete and full, it needs to either get seven more electrons or it needs to do what it does, which is gives away one of those electrons. Okay, so it gives away one of its electrons to something like chlorine, and now you have sodium chloride, which is also called table salt, and the charge would be Na plus Cl uh, negative. So if we're looking at a covalent bond, okay, Generally speaking, this is going to happen with even type of numbers of valence electrons, and so you're sharing. Okay, so each thing in this situation is sharing the electrons. You're not donating them or you're not receiving them, you're sharing them. So in carbon dioxide here, there is no charge because ions have charge, remember? And so these atoms are sharing the electrons. It's like having a good partner, they're sharing the work. Okay, they're sharing the load, so two electrons are being shared. Now, Lewis dot, okay, that's what this is represented because it shows us that these two dots represent two electrons. One electron, another electron. You might see a dash sometimes. A dash in between two atoms represents two electrons. Double dash in between two electrons represents four being shared. Okay, if you have three dashes in between atoms, then it represents six electrons being shared. Okay, so this right here, what you see is like the Lewis dot method. Okay.